Uh, hello, everyone, and uh, thank you for joining us uh, today. My name is Dominic Mwasia, the Executive Director and Co-Founder of the Kenya Education Fund, one of the most amazing nonprofits in the high school scholarship space in Kenya. Please allow me to take this early opportunity to welcome you all to yet another interesting virtual tour. And for those of us who are joining us for the first time, this is our third one in a row. KF has officially been around for about 17 years uh, now. Uh, actually this month, although I enrolled the first student some 19 years uh, ago, which was in 2005. Our mission has remained the same over the years, which is to provide economically disadvantaged students in Kenya with scholarships and educational support so that they can improve their lives and that those of their communities. And we achieve this by providing five year scholarships, four of which are for high school and one year for the first year of college. Whether they go to university, whether they go to a diploma course, we do support them as long as they have an admission to an institution of higher learning. Here at KEF, we foresee that one day, Kenya will be a self-reliant country uh, for all the people in Kenya uh, through education. For the period that we have been around, over 4,000 students have gone through the program with 65% of those joining the world of work. And we continue to receive impressive stories uh, of these young men and women supporting themselves, their families and communities, hence keeping alive the vision of the KEF, which is self-reliance through education. As the executive director, I am happy and very proud to mention that seven out of our 11 staff members are actually alumni, including the country director, Francis. One of our alumni sits on the Kenyan board, while another is almost completing her application to join the board in the US. This year we have put and kept in school close to uh, 600 students across the country. These young men and boys, I mean young boys and girls, did not only receive quality education, but were also guaranteed their own bed, three square meals, running water, and electricity. By providing access to quality education, we are not only creating a pathway to meaningful employment, but also preventing adverse cultural practices like female genital mutilation. And for those of us who don't know, this simply means uh, female circumcision. Uh, we also prevent and fight early marriage, cut or rustling, things like drug abuse, crime, but also prevent the brain drain, which comes as a result of our young men and women wanting to pursue greener pastures abroad. The goal of the KEF is to, is to support Kenyan students in Kenya and create pathways to self-reliance here at home. KEF continues to celebrate over 99% of high school graduation rates with over 98% of these transitioning to institutions of higher learning. Unfortunately, the cost of education in Kenya continues to be a huge impediment with statistics indicating that 65% of Kenyan youth will not be able to complete high school without financial support. And this is the gap that KEF is trying to bridge. Our application process is about to be completed and we shall soon be selecting over 160 students from the thousands of applications received this year. They will be joining school in January and will be with us for the next five years, as mentioned earlier, four years of high school and the first year of college. On average, it will cost about $1,000 per year to keep one student in school, or simply put, about $85 per month. And students will be guaranteed five years of quality education. These 5,000 will be able to afford them tuition, uniform, school shoes, sanitary parts for girls, and workshops on life skills, mentorship, and career readiness. With your support, we believe that these deserving students will be able to go to school and remain there until they graduate. As I close, I want to take this opportunity to thank all of you for believing in the work and in the work that we do and for working with us this far, whether as individuals, as corporates, family foundation, and our businesses. While I cannot mention all of you by name here, please allow me to recognize a few who have been with us for long and in a big way. 
Island for Fova of Enchanted Fairies, uh, Rainwater Charity Foundation, uh, Cotier Donce Foundation, Crossing Threshold, Sego Family Foundation, Prudential Life Assurance Kenya Limited, based in Nairobi, uh, Jim North, and the Congregational Church Community in Boulder, Colorado, uh, Lit World, who have been our partners for the last many years, and all of you, I may not be able to mention you by name, but it is because of you that we've been able to do the things that we have been able to do. Um, we also celebrate other nonprofits, other NGOs, other players in the society. Whatever you do, whatever it is that you're doing, you are contributing to this world becoming a better place, one person at a time. I also want to take a few minutes to appreciate our two boards actually, because we have a board in Kenya and also a board in the US for providing exemplary governance and wisdom in guiding the KEF to be an outstanding organization. Not forgetting all the staff members, I have mentioned 11 of them, and the commitment they have made and for often going beyond the call of duty in ensuring that our students are adequately supported and that relationships are managed in a way that allow for conducive environment for all our students to thrive. I know all of us are very eager to jump into this uh, tour and meet our students in different locations. And so I won't take a lot of time. I just want to mention that in the last uh, two previous virtual tours that we had, we visited uh, students in rural farming communities, pastoral communities as well, and students who, who live or settle in informal urban settlements. Today we shall visit students and alumni in the lake and the re uh, coastal regions and an alumni who works and lives in the city. So without further delay, I take you to Monchi. And Monchi is not only our tour guide for today, but she's a very proud KEF alumni. And please, I ask you ladies and gentlemen to sit back on your comfortable seats or sofas and enjoy this ride. Over to you, Monchi. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dominic. Hello, everyone. I am Moishi, Moishi Lanaisenya, but I prefer Moishi. I will be your host this year. I am a KF alumni, class of 2015, and I now work with KF as a communications assistant. It was amazing visiting the amazing locations I will show you today and collecting these stories. Welcome to Kenya. A vibrant country in East Africa with 50 million friendly faces. We are known for our stunning wildlife, rich culture, and world-class marathon runners. We have 65 national parks that are home to the Big Five. Kenyans have vibrant traditions from colorful dances to timeless tales that showcase the beauty of our 44 ethnic tribes. Our national languages are English and Kiswahili. Our main economic activities are farming, pastoralism, and fishing. Today, we will meet two current students, two KF alumni, one who is currently in university and one KF alumni one year into her career, Karibuni, Kenya. On this tour, we will visit three locations in Kenya. Bamba Kilifi in the coastal region of Kenya near Indian Ocean, Mfangano Island in Lake Victoria, and Nairobi with an alumni from Nakuru County. Welcome. To start with, meet Sawa Kazungu. Sawa comes from rural Kilifi, a place called Bamba. This is 40 kilometers from Mombasa, Kenya. The main economic activity in Bamba is peasant farming, and the area experiences severe drought, which causes many of the households there to be extremely needy because they only do farming. Sawa is one of 17 children and comes from a polygamous family with three mothers. He is one of two children to join high school in his family out of 17. Sawa prepared a video for us from his home and let's go see him now. Hi. 
I'm Patrick Sawa and this is our home. With me are my dad, my mom and my stepmom. These are my siblings and their friends. Welcome. This is my father's house. This is where my father, mom and stepmom lives together with the small children and it's made of poles from the forest and mud and building is usually a communal work. This is our kitchen. This is where we cook and the main source of fuel is firewood. Let me show you inside. And these are jerry cans which are used for fetching water and girls normally do it. Now let me show you my house. This is the house and I share it with my brother. This is the house and culturally boys are not allowed to stay in the same house with their parents after circumcision and, and that's why we stay here together with my brother. This is our table and sometimes we, we stand here but because we don't have chairs sometimes we have to go to the nearest primary school to do our studies. This is the bed we share, and I share it with my brother and one of the reasons that I prefer to be in school is that I have my own bed. I have 17 siblings out of which only two of us have attended high school and many of them have got married and they have their own families. This is our chicken cage and we have around 11 chickens. This is my father's house. Let me show you inside. This is my stepmom's bedroom and this is my mom's bedroom. In my family we are peas and farmers and this is our family farm and three months ago when I was on a holiday this is where I farmed and as you can see we are in the harvesting period and the largest challenge is attacks from elephants which usually come from the Tsavo National Park which is one of the largest national parks in Africa. Another challenge is use of poor methods of farming which gives out low output and this is one of the things that I would like to change through my education. With me having the KEF scholarship my parents are now able to concentrate on the younger ones because they have been reduced the burden of fee paying. Sawa has a talent for speaking to a camera and now Sawa studies at Starehe Boys Center, a national school in Nairobi County. It is one of the best schools in Kenya. I loved seeing the school and its rich history. Here is a video of him showing us his amazing school. My name is Patrick Sawakazungu, Stare Boys Center and School, uh, one of the national schools in Nairobi City. It is 525 kilometers away from my home, and these are the things I like about my school. There is developed infrastructure. This is the highway. On my right hand are offices for the clubs and societies. Here is the form two block and here is, is our assembly hall which is used for meetings, assembles, etc. This is our hall which is large enough to accommodate the 1200 students during assemblies. This is our dining hall. We usually eat at our respective tables Red meal is on Monday and Friday, where we when we have ugali and meat. These are from one classes, particularly this is my classroom. Let me show you my desk. As you can see, our class is very spacious. It accommodates the 46 of us, and my sub, my favorite subjects are history, CRE, and business. Uh, this is this is our library. It's very huge, and it has a variety of books which are very benefic beneficial to the students. And I'm one of the librarians, and my duties in the library is wiping wiping dust off the shelves and 
arranging books uh, let me show you where I work in this library so this is where I work as you can see my shelf is well arranged and it's also wiped I did this today in the morning this library is open for all students during the library hours this is our, this is our dormitory it's called hostel house yes this is my bed I like this bed because it's comfortable That video took me back to my high school days of lining up for food. And it was really amazing being there. You have seen Sawa at home, you have seen Sawa at school, and now you get to see Sawa live with my colleague Krista at his home. Over to you, Sawa. Sawa, please unmute yourself. Thank you. Hello everyone. My name is Patrick Sawa and you've just seen me while in school as well as at home. I'm glad to join you again today and um, this being a school break, in fact this being the longest holiday in our Kenyan academic calendar, I'm at home. I'm joining you live from Bamba Kilifi and um, just to inform you, I perform a number of a number a number of duties in a day which includes doing some farming in the morning before sparing some time for my books and church services. That is on Tuesdays and Fridays. I'm glad to join you today and I'm going to share with you a little. So when I got the scholarship, it was a relief to the family as I myself wasn't sure whether I was going to join high school or not. It was like a dream which had come true. I really appreciate Kenya Education Fund for the support they've been giving me since I joined Form 1 this year. This year, um, I had my sister who sat for her KCPE examination and she performed exemplary well. I still thank Kenya Education Fund because since the since Kenya Education Fund is taking taking care of my school fees, at least now the family will be able to focus on this younger one in terms of fee paying. I really appreciate the support because at least next year, three of us, three of the 17 children in our family will be able or will have been able to join high school i thank i thank kenya education fund thanks to you all and may the almighty bless, bless you as uh, thank, thank you. you thank you very much uh, patrick sawa for taking us to your school and also opening your doors to opening the doors to your home for us uh, we got to see where you school and where you live uh, and also thank you for sharing whatever you've shared. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if there's anyone in the audience who has a question for Patrick Sawa, while we still have Sawa, uh, kindly raise up your hand or you can also post your question in the chat and uh, Sawa will gladly respond to, to your question. Uh, thank you, anyone. And if you would like uh, you, you know, to share your video, you could also allow us to see you as you ask the question. Thank you. Anyone with a question for Sawa? Alison got... has a question. Y yes, Alison. Sorry, I thought I'd kick it off. <laughs> um, so Sawa, um, I'm curious, this is something that we haven't spoken to you about before, but 
Is there something in your village that you would potentially change or contribute to um, once you're successful in your career? I know that you spoke about uh, farming, but is there something also um, in your village that maybe could be um, changed or added to? Pardon? Uh, so I'm, I'm not sure whether you got the question. Alison is asking whether there is anything in your village that you'd wish to see changed or you'd wish to change in the future. Yes, apart from changing the methods of farming or improving the farming methods, I will also like to see poverty being eradicated in our community. So poverty and drug abuse. Thank you. Th thank you. I hope, Alison, you answered. We do have two related questions in the chat. Uh, and we uh, so two people, are, two members of the audience are asking, uh, what dreams do you have, Sawa? I would like to become a doctor. I would like to pursue medicine in surgery. So I would like to become a doctor, um, become a surgeon uh, at some point. At this point, we'll take one more uh, and then we can move on to the next location or to the next student. And then if there's any question that will come up after Sawa has left, we can always answer that uh, at the end. Sawa will still be around to respond to such. Uh, Anne Evans, over to you. Thank you so much, Sawa, for sharing your life with us. Um, I, I know that the life of someone who's grown up in a pastoral community is very different from the lives of people who've grown up in the city. And I wondered, as you're in a national school and you see students from all over the country, are there special challenges that you see uh, coming into that that setting from a pastoral environment, um, are there and what are the the key differences that you feel as a result? Um, there are no major challenges because of that. I consider myself to be equal with everyone in school. Great, that's wonderful. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, thank you for those uh, wonderful questions. Thank you, Sawa, for responding to them. And uh, I would like to take us back to Monchi uh, to to us to the next location. Monchi. Thank you very much, Sawa and Dominic. I hope you guys enjoyed Sawa's videos because now we're about to go to an amazing young girl called Gibran Chengo, who is also from Bamba Kilipi. In fact, her home is like a 20 minute walk from Sawa's home. She is in form three, that's junior year and will be completing high school next year. In this region, most girls get married after primary education and are mothers by 16. This is due to the poverty level and the youth begin to fend for themselves at a very early age. Gabrian comes from a single mother household and is one of five children. She is the only one to have gone to high school from her siblings. Her elder sister dropped out in class eight and went to work as a house help in Mombasa to support the family. Her younger brother was to join this year, but was also delayed. Here is the video that Gibrian prepared for us at home. Hi, my name is Gibrian Chengo, a student at Kombeni Girls. I live in Bamba, Kilifi County, here with my mom and my sister. Welcome to our home. This is our house. Let me show you inside. This is our sitting area where I use it to study when I'm at home. And as you can see, these are uh, my sister's book. And this is the table we use it when we are studying. We don't have electricity. What we use is just the torches or daylight solars, or we go for the nearest primary school for studies. This is the bedroom where my sister and 
my mother uh, used to sleep and I used to go off to my cousins and sleep with them because it's not enough for Russell. One thing I like after school is to get my own bed. As a girl, I have many duties. One, fetching water from a borehole, which is one kilometer. I also fetching firewood from the local forest, which is 10 kilometers away. I, I cook and also cleaning for the family. I use much of the time to perform the duties rather than studying. That's why I'm so thankful for KF scholarship that I am in a boarding school that I can focus well in my education. Being grown in a single mother family is very difficult. That's my mother is unemployed and we have to depend on our sister who who is working as a help, a house help. Me without KF scholarship, I would have joined my sister who dropped out in class 7 and gone for a job in Mombasa City. Or I would have gotten married like some of my classmates who gotten married after class 8 because of lack of money for proceeding in their secondary education. My dream after my studies is to build a very beautiful and permanent house for my mother where he can live, she can live well and comfortable. That was a wonderful video of Gibrian at home. I was sad to find out today that that house that we recorded in during the long rains that came, um, it fell apart because it is made of mud. But now I'm happy to say we have Gibrian live at home with her cousins. Over to you, Gibrian and Sheila. Okay. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. My name is Gibrian Chengo from Bamba Kilifi. I live with my mother and my four siblings at Bamba Kilifi. Here, yeah, I'm happy to join you today. And I'm happy to see all the KF staffs visiting me today. I started at the Kombeni Girls, which is which I take two hours to reach at school. And it is a boarding school. It is one of the best girls' schools in Kilifi County. Through the KF education, no, through the KF scholarship. It has really helped me in many things because if not KF, I will not join high school. And I would like to thank KF for everything that had offered to me, including being, including paying my school fees and offered providing me the school uniforms from form one and the form three classes. Also through the KF one and form three class, they have really helped me in and influences me positively. And I have realized myself and I understand myself more through the sessions that are always offered to us, such as self-awareness. Me being one of the KF scholars, I really appreciate UKF organization for taking me, for taking care of my scholar, school, school fees, because my brother who has led for one year after his KCP examination, he is now able to join Form 1 in January. Then lastly, I would like to appreciate KF because if it's not your help, I will join my sister in Mombasa City 
being a house help or being married at my early age. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, Gabriel, for opening your doors and showing us your home. Uh, and also, you know, introducing us to your cousins. I'm not sure whether those are your cousins or your siblings, but they look amazing. And, and we are very happy to know that your younger uh, brother will be able to go to school now as a result of the family being able to put resources together because of this scholarship. Thank you. Uh, is there any member in the audience uh, who would uh, have a question, who has a question for Gibran? Gibran is very happy to respond to any question. You can either raise up your hand or you can put the same in the chat and uh, Gabriel will be able to answer while, while we still have her here. Uh, yes, Mitzi, Mitzi, I see there's a hand by Mitzi. Good morning, good afternoon. Uh, Gabriel, thank you for sharing with us and congratulations to you for your schooling and how far you're going. Um, you had mentioned that there are many things that you learn about yourself when you go to the different uh, when you go to the different sessions and learning opportunities. I wonder if you could tell us a little bit as well about what you learn together with the other KEF scholars and what it's like being with the other KEF scholars. Gabriel, did you did you get that? What is it that you have learned together in the KEF workshops as, as, as a KEF scholar? Okay. In KEF, I have learned to boost my self-esteem in whichever way. Thank you. Is, is there anything else you would want to add to that, Gibran? No. Okay. All right. Is, is there another question from the audience? Uh, yes, Victor Goma has a comment. He says you have what it takes to bring the changes that you want to see. Thank you, Victor. Uh, there's a question from Alison. Uh, to you, Gabriel, the question is, what do you want to do in the future as your career? Gabriel. I want to do teaching. You, you want to become a teacher? Yeah. Nice. I, I don't meet a lot of students who want to be teachers. So this is quite unique. Thank you. Um, if there's anything, if there's no other question from the audience, um, we can go to the next location, Monchi. Uh, before we do so, let me mention that you can still put your question in the chat and we'll be able to respond to it at the end of it. And I could also, at this point, uh, remind our audience uh, that you can support more students like Gabriel and also Sawa to go to school and the other two that you're going to see uh, by uh, visiting our website. There's a QR code that will be shared and also a link uh, so that we can put as many students like this ones into, in, in, into school. Thank you very much, Dominic. Thank you, Sawa. Thank you, Gibrian. I'm seeing Gibrian's cousin is there entertaining us with fascinating facial expressions. And now before I take you to our next location, I'd like to invite our VP of development, Stephanie Gasman from Indiana to take us through a miniature segment. Welcome, Stephanie. Thank you, Manchi. Thank you, Dom. Thank you so much for everyone who's joined us today. We appreciate it so much. We know you are taking out your time to join us today to go on this journey. And as you can tell from these stories, you are making an impact in a child's life. 
And we partner with these children and their families and their schools to help them to reach their full potential. And we tackle one of the root causes of poverty and injustice, and that is the lack of education. Sponsorship changes lives. Sponsorship programs like KEF have been proven to have positive linkages with self-reported sense of happiness, health, and hope. And there are different ways to give to Kenya Education Fund. Um, so some of the things I just wanted to mention really quickly, um, you can, if you have a charity charitable gift annuity, um, also if you have stock, um, you can also use a donor advice fund, and you can also use your IRA. Um, these are various ways that you can give to the Kenya Education Fund. And you will see a QR code that will come up right now. Um, so if you feel led to give, um, please do so. And again, if you have any questions about these other ways of giving, like stock or donor advice funds, please reach out to us. We'll be more than happy to walk you through the process. And we appreciate your support and we could not do our work without you. And we just wanna say thank you very much. And also there will be a link in the chat um, to our website and donation page. And again, we just want to say thank you so much for changing so many children's lives. And you're not only changing a child's life, you're changing their future and the future for their children. Thank you so much. Back to you, Manchi. Thank you, Stephanie. Now we get to go to our first alumni, Joseph Kirenge, who comes from a beautiful remote island in Lake Victoria called Mpangano Island. It is one of the largest in Lake Victoria. Lake Victoria is the largest freshwater lake in Africa and the second largest in the world. It connects three African countries, that is Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania. And it is the source of the very famous River Nile. The community around Mpangano Island practices fishing and depends on the lake all year round. Kenya has the least of Lake Victoria and fish is scarce, making households in Pangano get just enough for food. While I was there, I, we went for fishing. It was my first time fishing. It was a lot of hard work and we barely got two kgs. This is what the 12 fishermen who participate in the mode of fishing were to share. I luckily got a bargain and they sold me the fish. They caught which was six fish at $2. Now let's take a trip to Kirenga's home. Good afternoon, I'm Joseph Kirenga Ngwana, currently a fifth year student at the University of Nairobi, taking bachelor, bachelor of Veterinary Medicine. Uh, currently in Mfangano Island, situated in Lake Victoria, one of the most and the largest inland water lakes in Africa. Uh, let me show you my home. It is on a hill. So this one is our house. So we've been living here uh, with the family and we have a small kitchen there. Yeah, inside. Uh, it is uh, iron sheet roofed and uh, the wall uh, is made of mud. Yeah, this is our casual kitchen. Uh, mud thatched walls. And in a nutshell, this is how it looks like. And mostly, since we do live in the island, water is not a problem. Uh, let me introduce you to my family. So, starting from here, uh, she's my mom. She's Zilpa Diambo. Uh, she has been the one that uh, has been uh, raising us up. Come on, let's care. Manana has scholarship. Your scholarship is in this idea, son. Come on, nilikuwa kama sina chochote. Mi na lima tu, school fees wezi. Sasa nimepiga santi kwa scholarship. Ame sa idea mi. Ame piga santi kubo. Uh, these are my stepbrothers. Uh, he's Moses Onyango. Hey, watoto wapa wanataka usaidizi kwa mana wengine wanasoma badala kumaliza sule wanakatu nyumbani. 
Uh, fun fact, uh, I started fishing at uh, around nine years of age and I've been doing it. Uh, it is my life and um, it has really impacted positively in the lives of those that are around me. Sometimes it is a bit frustrating uh, comparing the number that pull the net and the fish that is caught. Like we only caught six fish compared to the number. Uh, so I come from a polygamous family. My mom is the second wife and um, I'm the only surviving child among three of us that uh, she bore. Yeah, my first brother I dropped out of school while uh, in class five so to at least support the family since the dad was so old by then. He was 80 years old. After that, they passed the same year. That is around 2003. After that, my mom took me to live with my grandma. This led me to beginning uh, grade one at age nine, uh, which is a bit late as compared to my peers. Uh, so when I reached class eight, uh, and uh, fortunate enough, I was among those that were selected that year by Kenya Education Fund, and that is where my, Kenya, uh, my journey with the Kenya Education Fund began till now. Thank you very much, Joseph. I hope you guys saw how beautiful that island was. And an interesting fact before we go to Joseph Live is the price of fish there was shocking compared to the price of fish that we buy in Nairobi. So maybe there's a middleman somewhere who is taking advantage of the fisherman from there. But Joseph will tell us more. Joseph is now live at his school with Simon. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm happy to join you today. Uh, joining, from, joining you from Nairobi, Kenya, and specifically from University of Nairobi. I'm Joseph Kirengi Angwana, uh, final year veterinary student, currently pursuing Bachelor of Veterinary Medicine. Uh, mostly the course runs for six years with five years classwork and one full year mandatory internship. I really count myself a privilege uh, having reached this level of education. And this is a testimony of uh, what Kenya Education, uh, a testimony of what Kenya Education Fund uh, is really doing as compared to my peers uh, that uh, dropped out of school for various reasons. Uh, school fee being one of the major contributing factors. Uh, we sat for KCP, 28 of us. 15 of us, we made it to high school, uh, meaning 14, uh, around 13, I dropped uh, in class eight after we have uh, sat for class eight exams. And then out of 15 that we joined high school, only two of us made it to uh, campus. And this is really a privilege. Uh, currently, currently, uh, while in school, uh, I do participate in various activities uh, where community outreach is uh, one of the activities that we do participate in. Mostly, we go out there. We do free pregnancy diagnosis in various farms. We do vaccinations for farmers. Also, we do offer extension services for farmers. And also for pet owners, mostly, uh, I was retained as one of the interns in one of the clinics that I joined. So mostly, I do also participate uh, in volunteer activities. 
uh, in doing space for the cats and dogs, the vaccinations. Yeah, it is one of my desire uh, that one day I really impact positively in the community that I come from. And this is mostly uh, geared uh, towards offering the skills that I've gained so far through my education life. And uh, mostly I'm having a great interest in livestock production sector. Uh, since the community that I mostly I come uh, from, the major economic activity is fishing. And currently uh, there it has proven to be unreliable source of income and the various challenges that mostly the fishing community are currently we are facing there. So if the community can be given an alternative source of income apart from fishing, I think it really it will it will really impact positively. Uh, so some of the things that I desire is to at least sensitize them on the various uh, opportunities that are there in livestock production, be it uh, goat keeping, beef production, dairy production, and also aquaculture, uh, which is currently coming up in Lake Victoria, where currently most people are venturing into fish cage farming. So I think that will also provide an alternative source of income to them so that at least they don't depend entirely on the on on the natural fishing methods that we were born we we've practiced and people are still practicing it and it is currently unreliable and also what i'm currently doing in the island uh, we i do during my uh, holidays that are there also Alongside friends, we do participate in providing maternal health care because also health care has been a problem in the island uh, since there is no that much access for those that we live in the island because most of the services, mostly we do source them from the mainland. So, and we really find uh, that there were most maternal deaths as the distance between Mfangano and the mainland with the boats alone you take approximately two hours to reach mainland so uh, also some of my friends started doing it and I joined them as a way of giving back to the community and also we do participate in uh, looking for various available scholarship opportunities uh, to also educate those that are coming up. I'm really privileged and I'm really grateful uh, for what Kenya Education Fund has done. It has really opened doors and opportunities for me uh, through interaction with different people. And uh, also, uh, it enabled me to attend one of the best schools in the country and also the best university currently in East and Central Africa. So this is just a testimony of what Kenya Education Fund has done. And uh, all the whole team that really ensured uh, that the five years that they paid my school fee uh, to really be uh, fruitful and really privileged to give a testimony of uh, the good journey that we've worked with Kenya Education for so far. Thank you so much, and may God richly bless you all. Um, thank you. Thank you very much, Joseph, first of all, for taking us to your island and introducing us to your family members and showing us your beautiful landscape and also sharing that a uh, lot a bit about your education and the things that you're doing, even as a student before you graduate. Uh, two members in the audience have a question. Uh, one wants to know, uh, just based on what you've told us, you are a very busy young man. Do you ever get time for fun or to relax? And what is that like for you? The other, the other question, if I could ask very quickly, is 
what what do you wish to do or how do you wish to support uh, your family after you've graduated as a vet doctor? If you could ask those two very quickly, Mr. Falali. Uh, okay. Uh, as a fun fact, in the next five months, I'll be out there, yeah, having that degree. Uh, despite the busy schedules that are always there, I really love swimming. So when when I'm a bit pressed up with issues of life, I do create myself sometimes over the weekend to at least just go there, uh, swim, and then just come back and I really resume uh, the activities of the week. So swimming is mostly a stress reliever, and I really do it for fun. I'm not a professional swimmer, uh, but uh, it is natural. It is inbuilt. We were born. Uh, in the island. So one of the survival techniques that are there, you have to know swimming. And also as a fisherman, you have to know swimming uh, as, a, as a lifesaver. So that is mostly what I do. And um, one of the things uh, that I would like to at least do to improve the living standards of the, of the family. Uh, from the all extended family, I'm the first person to make it to campus. And uh, I've really seen uh, those that were ahead of me, most of them have really dropped out of school. And uh, the only thing that mostly they do nowadays is fishing. And it is really unpredictable. So on family basis to at least help them. Because uh, I'm seeing some of them are still willing to at least go back to school and have some skills. Uh, if in one way or the other, uh, I find something in my hand, uh, if there are those that are still willing to at least have some skills be it in tertiary education, I'll be more willing to help them gain that education. And uh, also to at least open them some small businesses to at least help them to be self-sustaining because being the sole provider might uh, might might be impossible providing for the whole extended family and uh, also for those that are still coming up I really understand the challenges that are there raising school fee is always a problem so also through paying their school fee uh, will really be a good way in at least uh, upgrading the standards on the family basis yeah thank, thank you thank you joseph uh, in the interest of time uh, members in the audience will allow us to move on to the next student joseph will still be around and if there's any other follow-up question he'll be happy to respond to it and you can also continue putting your questions in the chat over to you monty thank you dominic and thank you kirenge Kiranga's home is really far, like it is genuinely really far. And after you get almost there, you have to take a two hour boat ride. And for the first time in my life, I got seasick. I was worried we were going to capsize. I was looking for life jackets. It's really far, but it is very beautiful. And now to our final alumni, who is Hilda. She comes from Kaptembo village. Nakuru County. Nakuru is the newest city in the country and it is home to Lake Nakuru, which is very famous for its flamingos. From there, Hilda moved to Nairobi and she now works and lives in Nairobi. And her story is a testament to the impact that education has on a life and on a village. She's here live to share her story with us. Over to you, Hilda. Hi everyone, uh, thank you for joining us today. It is wonderful and very lovely to e meet all of you today. My name is Hilda Chubet. I am alumni class of 2014. I come from Kaptemba village as Munshi has said in Nakuru. I come from a family of four children. I am the second born out of the four children. I, uh, my parents, uh, were not formally employed. So my father didn't go through high school and therefore 
Uh, he lost his job in the year 2006. Uh, my mother was also not formally employed, unfortunately. So uh, he, she used to do menial jobs for, for, for work. And uh, therefore, it meant that we didn't have a stable income. And how my family is structured is that uh, we cannot all be in school at the same time because then the financial burden will be too heavy on my parents. Um, so I joined KEF in 2012. So before joining KEF, uh, I was supposed to leave school so that my younger brother can join high school. So it was a very difficult moment for me, especially uh, because um, I, would, I loved my brother, but then it meant that I would fall back on my education. And it also meant that then I could not enjoy the benefits that I, I saw some other people enjoying. My uh, mother, my, my parents also were at, at a loss because uh, they could not afford, the financial burden for them was a bit too heavy. Um, KEF sponsored me uh, since 2012 to 2014. When uh, KEF came in, uh, honestly and truly speaking, it was very, it was a very pivotal moment for my entire family because uh, first of all, it meant that my brother could also join school and my my parents could focus on my brother joining school, and I could also benefit from them in that uh, some of the benefits that came from that was I could get new uniform, which was very hard. Uh, my family, like I said, the structure is that I most times I get hand me downs because I'm the second born, but then it meant that. By KF joining and me joining KF through the scholarship, I was able to actually have my own uniform and some of the fee that came through that uh, enabled my parents to just focus on the other siblings that were coming, that were joining school. Uh, I talk about KF as uh, my beacon of hope because then since joining KF, I have gained uh, a lot of uh, confidence my first gig, I work in the communications field now, my first gig I keep telling people came from KF because they believed in me through the several workshops that came from there. I got my first job to speak at the final KF dinner and workshop in 2014 after clearing high school. Uh, it was very pivotal since then. After then, I have never stopped speaking. I have never had stopped having conversations with people, especially uh, those that I think need a voice. Uh, so I have never uh, stopped speaking about that. Um, after high school, I went through campus and even through the transition from post high school to campus then work, KF has been uh, holding my hand. I remember one of the things that I keep remembering uh, is that we learned in high school was to know who my personality is. And I think that is one of the things that I keep taking myself back to. So I took a test when I was, uh, I was doing the workshop. So what did it say about me and how can I then uh, keep on relating to that and going back to myself and not losing myself during the transition. Um, so I will be graduating next week, 15th of December, top of my class, and also uh, with first class honors. Um, I took school and I also work. So while I was at school, I still am currently at school because I'm not yet graduated, but I now work uh, in Nairobi for a company called Evminet Communication Solutions. My company deals with online child safety. Uh, we help the child and their ecosystem uh, to just uh, empower the kids, uh, the child to navigate uh, the system, the, the online, uh, basically just how they can navigate uh, the online space safely. So my, the, the, I deal with the parents, uh, children, because we have to teach them online safety guidelines. So how do they go about cyberbullying, online harassment, online child sexual abuse, basically the entire space and how to navigate that safely. Um, now, I think ever since I joined KF and passed KF and getting the job, uh, KF has enabled me to now look back and I now currently help my sister. I have a younger sister who's joining high school. And some of the things that KF helped me go through, for instance, buying for me books when I needed them. I now assist my family to go through that. I now give uh, my sister some stipend. I help my parents pay off some of the school fees that they need paid for my sister. I buy her books. So I think um, that has been truly, truly uh, impacting for me. The other thing that I think uh, I keep on thanking KAF for is for believing my potential very, when I was still very young, I'm, 
you look at me like this and you'd not believe the photos that I keep taking back when I go back to KF photos because I was very tiny. But I, I remember one time I, I made this poem and I think I keep referring back to it, is that uh, one day they will know my name. I think I'm making my mark in this space. And this could not have happened honestly without the help of KF. Um, I think KF is also a family for me because now we have I have an entire alumni uh, foundation behind me. And through this alumni association, uh, the Kenya Education Fund Alumni Association, we are now sponsoring another high school child. We're now sponsoring another child through high school. So it is very impactful. We are not we're just we're not only growing in one space, we're also expanding our roots to other places. So I do thank KF for believing in my potential. And thank you, thank you so much for supporting me. I believe um, the investment was worth it. And this is a true testament of how much your investment will mean to other people. So thank you, thank you so much. Um, <clears throat> thank you uh, very much, uh, Hilda, for sharing your life journeys. Uh, having said that, I'm not sure what else I, I, I can add to that other than to just thank you for sharing that. Uh, so we are, we, are, we, are, we are coming close to, to the end of, of the session. And, and it's only for Hilda that we didn't have a video. And at this point, I want to mention that all the videos you have seen, they were actually shot, edited, and managed all of that from point A to point Z by one Monty who is our tour guide of today, and also a very proud alumni. So Monchi, keep it up. You've done extremely well, and uh, all of us are happy with your work. Uh, as, as, as we come to the end, I, I would like to take this opportunity to invite questions from the members. I do have one or two that I need to respond to. Uh, but before we do that, I just want to remind all of us that we have a new cohort of students coming, coming in and they need to start school in January. This year we took in about 160. We wouldn't want to take in less than that. So we have at least 160. Our dream is to make it 240 and we can do it by your support. Different ways that Stephanie has mentioned. I'm not sure whether you can share a QR code here. Uh, if not, we can go to our website uh, and also see the different ways through which you can you can support KEF to be able to put more smiles like the ones you've just witnessed from Hilda, uh, from Joseph, from Sawa, and also from Gibran. So join us in making sure that these kids go to school and actually remain in school. Uh, the other thing I want to mention uh, before before I invite other questions is that there was a question about university. Uh, one member asked, "How do we?" since we support or we pay for the first year of university, how do they proceed uh, to graduate in the last three years? So the biggest challenge in Kenya is actually getting in. Students have to raise the first semester fee or the first year's fee before they can qualify for other forms of funding. There is a funding of loans by the government, we call it Higher Education Loan Board, and this is available to students who actually make it to university, but they have to be in. And for a lot of students who may not be able to actually get in, they are locked out of this opportunity. So the bridge scholarship, as we call it, allows our students to get in, settle down, and have enough time to go through the application process. After that, they're able to access uh, the loans and grants uh, from different government bodies. I hope I hope that is answered. I'm not sure whether there is any other question in the chat, or if there is anyone who has a question, I'll be happy to respond to. Uh, there was also a question about workshops that were mentioned by uh, by some of our students. I think two of them talked about the workshops. Uh, we realized a long time ago that getting a, a deserving students and putting them in a good school did not guarantee their success. They needed more than that. And so we introduced auxiliary support programs. And these are the life skills workshops, uh, reproductive health, mentorship, and also career readiness. As they begin high school, you've heard that some of them are traveling over 500 kilometers. It's a big transition. When you're coming from a village and then you're going to a city, for the first time in your life, we are 14, 15. So these workshops actually help our students 
to settle down and make that transition, but then also continue making informed decisions about things that affect them, both in school and also at home. And this could be as simple as self-awareness, self-management, how to relate with one another, interpersonal relationships, and how to kind of start thinking about careers in relation to the, to the subjects that you're doing now. After they finish, after they graduate from high school, then there is the workshop that prepares them to make the transition to tertiary institutions or to the world of work, which Hilda mentioned, it's called the CREW, which is career readiness, entrepreneurship, and reproductive health. This now helps students to make decisions about the next steps. And it is these supportive or auxiliary programs that actually sets KEF apart from many other organizations because students come out as leaders, they come out as responsible members of their communities with a very strong sense of giving back to their communities. I, I, I hope I have answered that question. Uh, is there another? There's one in the chat for Hilda. Okay. Um, Anne Evans would appreciate hearing Hilda talk about how in retrospect she sees the value of the workshops and what they meant for her. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for the question. Uh, so as, as Dominic has said, uh, one of the things they take us through, uh, especially in the workshop, is first of all, self-awareness. So um, we are taking through various sessions concerning uh, just knowing who you are, where you're from, and how then that uh, builds into yourself. So that then it allows you to be able to speak your own story without um, moving into someone else's story or trying to take someone else's story. So how that has been very impactful for me, especially now, uh, is because I think through those sessions, I am able to articulate myself. I am able to just uh, know where I stand in terms of, uh, there, there, there are going to be very many transitions, especially through high school and post high school. But I think if I had not gone through the workshops, then the transition would have been a bit harder for me because um, the, the workshops enabled us to be able to just learn who you are, where you're coming from, and, and how that is impactful in telling your own story. And also the other thing that uh, was very important for me back then was also just trying to figure out what path I want to go and follow. And I think I chose communication because back then I was, I think, the newest maker of the workshop. And I think that then moved towards me speaking, then me speaking for other people. So I think it helped me just know what path I'm, I want to follow and why I'm following that path. So it gave me the why to just being myself. Yes, I hope I have answered that correctly. Or it makes sense for everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Hilda. Monchi, is there any other question I'm missing that I could uh, help respond to? Maybe in the chat, if there's a member in the audience who has a question. As, as, as we think about that, I, I would like to provide something that Joseph has said. Um, one, they sat for KCP when there are 28 of them. KCP is the end of elementary school education. Uh, so there's a national exam that all of us get to sit for and it determines whether you're going to high school or not. So in their case, there were 28 of them who sat for that exam. Only 15 managed to go to high school out of the 28 who sat for that exam in their primary school. And then he went ahead and mentioned that out of the 15 who went to school, I mean to high school, it's only two who managed to go to campus. So if you look at that picture, it's kind of very gloomy. So 28 of them started school and only two managed to go to campus. That is over 92% dropout rate. That's quite high. And I think this is what KEF is trying to bridge to provide access to as many students as possible. And then once they are in school, we make sure that they actually remain in school. They don't have to drop out for any reason. And that they are not only coming out as academically suitable people, but also people with a sense of community, with a sense of responsibility. People who are basically are going to be better than us and make this place a better place. So as I appeal to you, these are the kind of impacts and the kind of changes that you and us can make together. Thank you. 
So I, I, I don't see any other question. Maybe at this point I should bring it to an end. I want to take this opportunity to thank all of you who made time to actually join us on our third annual tour from wherever it is that you joined us from. Uh, it's very interesting that this tour is becoming very global. We are having people from all over the world and we can't thank you enough that you managed to get to see what we do, where we do it and with whom. And we hope that you'll continue following us up and join us to make this place a better place for all of us. Thank you, Tim, uh, for putting this together. Thank you, Monshi, for traveling to all these locations and getting all these videos that are very professionally edited. I'm starting to worry whether we are likely to, lo to lose you to professional filmmakers. I hope you'll stay. Um, other than that, thank you, uh, Sawa, uh, Gibran, Joseph, Hilda, and the team that put this together. Uh, until we meet again, thank you. Santani Sana.